Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this is our um, Zoom recorded lecture for parts two, law one five one one. So for today, uh, we are going to start with a new topic, which is reformation. Okay. Uh, this is a very this is a very important topic because it's very relevant to um, present situation. Okay. Every day when we read newspaper, when we read social media, so we can. But we can actually sue uh, the act of defamation happens, and some of the parties they are suing uh, each other okay, for defamation. Okay, as far as the law is concerned, uh, we are going to refer extensively uh, to Defamation Act 1957, as well as common law principles. Meaning that here we are going to uh, refer to uh, 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 many many uh, cases from common law as well as local cases, and as well as the relevant provision, which is um, incorporated in Defamation Act 1957. As far as the acts of defamation is concerned, actually, uh, Malaysian law, it covers or it embraces both uh, civil defamation, as provided in Defamation Act 1957, as well as criminal defamation. So in some situation, actually, uh, one single act, okay, uh, would amount to both civil as well as criminal defamation. For criminal, it is provided in section 499 of the penal code. Okay, let's move further. Okay, so this is basically um, the skeleton or the things uh, that we are going to discuss for our for the purpose of the syllabus. Okay, for defamation, we are going to cover the definition as usual uh, and as well as the classification of defamation. And then we are going to proceed with the elements. But for part one of my recorded lecture here, we are going to focus on the um, definition, okay, the categories only. Later only, we continue with the elements. And uh, the latter part of our uh, lecture will cover defenses. As you can see here, okay, I put here definition, okay, libel. Lib uh, because we have two categories of defamation, it's either libel or slander. For libel, it is actionable per se, and then for slander, it is not uh, not actionable per se, but there exists exception to that. What is actionable per se? It is actionable. You can bring action the moment it is being committed without the need uh, of proof or proving damage or injury. Okay, we go to the definition. Actually, uh, there's no specific uh, or proper definition of the word. I mean, of the word defamation itself, okay? And then if you, we, if you refer to Malaysian uh, Defamation Act, we cannot find any specific provision, okay, which actually interprets the word def definition, uh, defamation itself, sorry. So, basically, the definition is actually uh, based from the case law, from the judgments. So, this is the basically um, the definition of the word defamation, okay? So basically, defamation it denotes or it refers to publication of a statement which reflects on the person's reputation. That's the emphasis or highlight reputation, and tends to lower him in the in the estimation of the right-thinking members of society generally, or tends to make them shun or avoid him. So it's a pretty long uh, definition of the defamation, but actually um, this. Uh, this definition okay, is a very comprehensive definition. Actually, it is combination of all the elements of a defamation. Okay, you can see some of the keywords here. Okay, publication, reputation, right thinking members of society. So basically, whenever there's any defamatory statement, publication, all right. So what's the effect? Okay, uh, it affects the reputation of the uh, plenty okay, of the person. Uh, who's whom being defamed basically in whose estimation in whose expectation in the from perspective of the right thinking members of society the, the reasonable person basically general person okay, this is basically the um, the classification okay, or the division the types so for defamatory statement is either okay, libel or is either Slander. So libel is defamation in a permanent form and usually is visible to the eye. Whatever which is uh, 
permanent in nature. So it is categorized as libel. It amounts to libel. But for slander, defamation in a temporary form. For example, spoken words. Okay, whatever things that you say or you utter, utterance of the word. Okay, spoken words. And then after you speak it, uh, you speak it up. Okay, that is that. I mean, um, it's not permanent. Okay, it, provided it's not recorded anyway. Okay, all right. Or even gestures. Okay, the conduct, the way you react, or your gesture, your uh, your facial expression, perhaps. Okay, gestures here. Also, it might amount to slander. Okay, and this is uh, some of the uh, important things that we want to discuss. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, this is libel. Basically, okay, whatever things are revolving around libel. So, libel is defamation in permanent form, usually visible to the eye. Example okay, of libel. Okay, example which is so common nowadays email, letters, okay, pictures, whatever things you can see, and it's permanent. Statue. Effigies, okay, what is statue? Effigies, yeah, effigies is sculpture. It's like sculpture, okay, the things that you carve, carve, carving. And then the principle is that, okay, libel is actionable per se. No need for the victim, no need for the plaintiff to prove that he has suffered actual damage. Uh, and then actually what the court will, will do is that um, uh, the court will assume that damage will result, okay, actually from the defamatory uh, act. Okay, or defamatory words whatsoever. Relevant um, uh, provision, section of defamation act is section 3 and section 2. Okay, I want to, let's, let's go to defamation act. I have it here. Okay, All right, this is the defamation act. Section 2 is about interpretation. Okay, interpreting section, section 2. So there's no definition okay, of the word defamation in section 2, but um, it defines, interprets uh, the meaning of words, okay? So words here, which is libel, includes pictures, okay, visual images, gestures, and other methods of signifying meaning. And section three, okay, broadcast, broadcast statement. For the purpose for the law, for, of the law of libel and slander, okay, the broadcasting of words, okay, by means of radio communication, whatever on air, okay? Uh, radio or even TV shall be treated as publication in permanent form. Why is this considered as permanent? Because it's possible to be recorded. So whatever things that you record, it is permanent. Especially nowadays, okay, whatever things that you record and you are, you upload on the internet, okay, you make it available to the public, to the whole world. Even though, for example, you delete, okay, but uh, other people actually can record or can, can screenshot at least okay, whatever things that you cut. Okay, let's go back to our slides. Okay, we were here. All right, so we're talking about here, right? Defamation Act, we talk about uh, section two. Okay, it defines the word words. And then also it talk about broadcasting. Okay, so it's considered as permanent. Whatever things you, you, you see on TV, you listen on radio. Okay, so all actually it is considered as libel. Okay. Uh, in what way slander differs? Okay, so you have you must be able to differentiate between um, libel and slander. For slander, it is defamation in temporary form, meaning that yeah, you say that you say it and then as if it's gone, even though it creates um, uh, effect, okay, impact to the other person that uh, you speak to. Okay, so example here: spoken words or gestures. And the rule is that it's not actionable per se. What are the things that plaintiff has to prove? First, plaintiff has to prove actual damage, which is financial loss from the defamatory spoken words. Okay? And then also, he, uh, plaintiff has to prove it is natural and foreseeable result of the defendant's words, okay? uh, the losses, whatever plaintiff suffered. And then direct result of the defendant's word. For example, uh, plaintiff, uh, sorry, defendant said something to the plaintiff and it affects him. Um, and give him direct result okay, from the spoken words. And then another uh, important feature of slander is that, okay, unlike libel, slander is difficult to prove, especially if this is something which is temporary, okay, especially uh, it's not being recorded and there's no, um, uh, I mean, maybe no witness. I mean, witness was there, but later was witness was, was not available okay, to testify in court. So how do you prove that actually uh, slender happen or exist. Okay, all right. 
So in most of the situation, it is very difficult to prove. But again, to balance the rule here, okay, there are five assumptions. Meaning that here, despite the fact that a slander is temporary, but then in this uh, five acceptance situation, um, it is actionable per se. No need to prove actual damage, okay? no need to prove that the things that uh, which has been spoken actually give direct result towards the uh, plaintiff. Okay. All right, so let's go to the um, uh, exception, okay? Exception, exceptions, which is slander can be actionable per se in this five situation, meaning that here in this five situation, as if slander is uh, equivalent to libel, it is uh, the moment it is being committed, the moment it is being uttered, then you can actually take action based on the defamatory words or gestures. Okay, the first one, imputation of the unchastity of a woman. Okay, what is imputation? Suggestion that something is guilty of something, or actually imputation is accusation. And number two, imputation of unfitness in any office or profession. Uh, third assumption, imputation to title or goods. And then number four, imputation of disease and then imputation of crime. We are going to discuss all the assumptions here um, in detail okay? because some of the assumptions we have uh, cases. And we have actually provision. Okay, imputation of the unchastity of a woman, it is provided under section four of Defamation Act. What is unchastity? Something which is uh, sexually immoral, immorality, but relate, specifically relates to sexual. We have these cases, but we, we, we want to have a look at section 4. A quick look at section 4 first. Okay, section 4, what does it say? Okay, there, all right. Section 4, slander of a woman. Who has spoken and published which impute unchastity or adultery? Uh, that's the word, okay? Adultery to any woman or girl shall not require special damage to render them actionable. So, in other words, it is actionable per se. Okay, we go back to the slides. Can okay, we go to the cases? We have two cases here, both are local cases. Look, look, Kailam uh, and Sim Island in 1978, and we also have Kumi Alpilda and Pass 206. In Luke Kailam and Sim Island here, both plaintiff and defendants, they were nurses. And then a defendant called plaintiff a prostitute. So it's just utterance of the words, okay? Um, no, no publication, I mean, no, no, nothing in writing, nothing being recorded, okay? So called plaintiff, nothing is broadcasting, broadcasted. So defendant called plaintiff a prostitute, imputing a chastity of a woman. And then actually, uh, what happened between them, there were frequent quarrel okay, among nurses and taking into consideration the generality of the accusation, okay, actually it amounts to slander against the plaintiff as a woman and not in, uh, in the way of her profession. So basically whatever things that uh, defendants uh, uttered said to the plaintiff, prostitute. So it's not really, it doesn't affect the, it's not about profession, it's about the, the personal um, character okay, of plaintiff. So this is an example of uh, imputation of unchastity, calling other person, other woman, a prostitute. Very serious, actually. For Umi Hafilda and Pass here, um, Defenders Magazine, because Pass has certain magazines, actually. Okay? Um, Defenders Magazine described um, a 34-year-old 34, 34 woman, Umi Hafilda, as a tacky Malaysian bimbo. I put all the meanings here, okay? A mentally unbalanced woman who designs tacky, gaudy clothing, a hooker, very serious, okay? hooker obsessed with deputy prime minister. So the court applies section 4 because all the words here actually, um, it is imputation of unchastity. Okay, tacky in means gaudy, like cheap, okay? bimbo, attractive, intelligent or frivolous young woman. Uh, and then hooker here actually, it is um, similar or synonymous with Prostitute, so it's similar to look uh, this case, okay, look Kailam just now, right? So this is an example of imputation of unchastity of a woman. All right, imputation of unfitness in any office or profession. This is covered by section five. Okay, we need to, we need to cross refer to defamation act. Okay, section five here. Right, you can read. Uh, I want to save time actually. You can read on your own later. Okay, I'm giving you a copy of this. So copy. Okay, all right. So what is all about here? Okay, section five. And then we have the case, John Tan Choryong and Lee Chai Chai Tian, okay, 1971. 
So plaintiff was a lawyer, okay? uh, he was an advocate and solicitor and he claimed the defendant's words uh, to plaintiff friend okay? uh, and client. So the defendant said something to friends and client. All right, to the effect that actually uh, he said, okay, uh, defendant said plaintiff was owing him several months rent. Yeah, he didn't pay my money, the rent. Okay? So all this thing was defamatory. Because why? The words were calculated to disparage okay, him in his office. It's like down, downgrading him, no money to pay or purposely doesn't want to pay whatsoever. But the payment was pending. So it affects the reputation as advocate and solicitor. So it affects the profession here. Okay? All right, we move to the third assumption, invitation to title goods. Okay, the first two is about intensity, it's about profession. Now it's about goods. Okay, we have section six. Uh, you can actually cross refer later. Section six, okay, here. All right, you can read on your own, it's, it's pretty long. Okay, section six here. Yeah. We have two subsections. Okay, feel free to read later, but I put all the J's here. Okay, section six, uh, it says okay, in, in an in an action for slander of title, slander of goods or other malicious falsehood here. Uh, so it covers those uh, situation, okay, whenever it involves title or goods okay, or other malicious falsehood. So what's the meaning of malicious falsehood here? The law protect the claimant interest in his property or trade. Whatever things you say which might affect the property or trade, so it's covered under um, section, sorry, under section 6 okay, of Defamation Act. So I give you an example here so that uh, what's the meaning of slander of goods? In what way goods could, um, I mean, uh, how, uh, the, the connection of slander and goods here? In what way? Uh, uh, how to commit and how it is being committed? Example here, if A, uh, the, A is the defendant, okay? if A writes letter to B, uh, advising not to order C is cha kwetiao. So C is the plaintiff. Okay? C, uh, C cha kwetiao or whatever things that C is selling okay? for this open house function. As A believes C uses less than fresh ingredients. Okay? So C may have a claim against A under section 6 section 1 A for slander of goods. Because uh, it affects the reputation of the goods that C is selling. So if A already informed B of the same, C has claims against A under section 6 Six uh, one B oral okay or you, this is writing okay writing a letter and this is oral whatever things that you say orally also uh, actionable per se because why it affects the goods here slander of goods and this is an example of malicious falsehood okay uh, false news okay false information with very bad intention malice okay malicious okay, example here illustration. If A tells me that C is no longer operating his coffee shop, uh, the statement may deprive C of his business, whereas C is still operating the coffee shop. And C in this instance may sue A for malicious falsehood okay, without having to prove special damage, provided okay, C can prove that he, uh, A was acting maliciously. Whenever you want to sue under malicious falsehood, must prove elements of malice. Okay. And then if A, another situation, okay, related but a little bit different. If A tells me that C has left the country and so B does not extend the invitation to C for grand reception B is holding for his daughter's wedding. So all of them are actually friends. Okay? In order to succeed in a claim for malicious falsehood, C must prove special or actual damage. Because why? Okay? Nothing to do with business whatsoever. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, must prove special damage here. You don't have to prove special because it affects the business of coffee shop. Here is just about the uh, invitation to the wedding, the grand reception of the wedding. So that's basically section 6, section 1, um, defamation act. Okay, section 4, imputation, accusation of disease. Not all disease, diseases are covered. Okay, It's only meant to cover contagious or infectious Disease because it's like uh, something which is humi humiliating. Okay, example, BD, viral disease, AIDS, okay, leprosy, etc. So, uh, viral disease is disease typically contracted by sexual intercourse, something which is humiliated. Uh, we don't have case on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, fifth assumption: imputation of crime. Okay, and then it doesn't uh, include. Okay, it doesn't cover all crimes. Okay, 
it only covers serious crime. For example, murder or rape. Okay, because lots of crime, but then uh, only specifically for certain crime, serious crime. And especially crime which attracts death penalty, whipping or imprisonment. Because why? Okay, if you accuse somebody of uh, committing or involving in this crime, okay, so the effect is that okay, but public will avoid him, will shun him. Okay? Uh, we have the case of C. Sivanathan and B. Uh, sorry, Sivanathan and Abdul 1984. So, defendant in this case, he called plaintiff a cheat, dishonest, and liar. Okay, all those words here. And then, is it actually part of, uh, can we prove it under imputation of crime? The court held that uh, this is actually libel case. Okay? Uh, sorry, slander. Since the crime did not attract corporal punishment, okay, it's not. Uh, that penalty or whipping or imprisonment, okay, the claim was not actionable per se. So, uh, plaintiff must prove actual damage okay, by uh, defendant saying, cheat, you are cheat, dishonest, a liar, okay. Did you actually suffer actual damage from the words here? Okay, all right? If not, then you, you cannot claim or you fail in your claim. This is what happened, okay. So, uh, uh, sorry, plaintiff fail in his claim because why? No proof of actual Damage. Okay, we stop here. So that's basically the first part of our uh, lecture for the topic defamation. Part two will cover the will continue okay with the um, elements here okay, of defamation. Yeah, okay, I stop share first. Right. So thanks a lot for listening. Hopefully you are able to um, digest or understand. Okay, so I'll see you in part two. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.